Welcome to the Brooklyn 99 full series recap. It follows Brooklyn's 99th precinct shenanigans as they solve cases, make horrible jokes, and fall in love. The precinct receives a new captain, Raymond Holt, a serious and efficient man. When everyone shifts from silliness to try and impress him, especially Amy Santiago, who Jake Peralta has a crush on, so he bets her that if he can make more arrests than her, he can take her on the worst day ever. Jake gets more arrests and takes out Amy on the worst date, but they are abruptly interrupted. During this, Captain Holt sends them on a stakeout that resembles more of an actual date. Charles Boyle is Peralta's best friend and has fallen in love with Rosa Diaz. Even after taking a bullet for her, he doesn't reciprocate any energy, so he moves on, secretly spending extra time with Gina Linetti, Captain Holt's assistant. Sergeant Terry Jeffords is working on getting back into the field, trying to get over his fear of his daughter growing up without a father. Amy goes on a date with her ex, Teddy, making Jake extremely jealous forcing him to admit that he has real feelings for her. However, before she can respond, Jake is sent out on an undercover mission with the mob. In the 99 is also Scully and Hitchcock, the most sedentary cops, culminating in the lowest arrest in the precinct. As Jake returns from undercover work, he finds out that Amy is back in a relationship with Teddy, so he rebounds with a defense attorney named Sofia Perez, but their relationship ends up falling through. People find out that Gina and Boyle have been hooking up, so they break it off. Somehow things turn weird when their parents, Lynn and Darlene, end up engaged. Rosa gets her her own task force to combat the new underground drug, Giggle Pig. At the same time, she starts dating Holt's nephew named Marcus. Jake and Amy are tasked with going undercover on a date, where they are forced to kiss to conceal their identity. Returning from their mission, they make out for real. Captain Holt has another run-in with his nemesis, Madeline Wunsch. She will do anything to annoy Holt, promoting him to NYPD public affairs, meaning he is leaving the 9-9. Jake and Amy are dating. Without Holt, the precinct is governed by the Vulture a captain that only takes credit for other people's work. Meanwhile, Jake, Holt and Gina work on a plan to catch the Oolong Slayer, a serial killer, using this momentum to get Captain Holt back to the 99th precinct. Terry has another child, making it number 3. Scully and Hitchcock accidentally get placed into a drug case, getting captured. Things turn when they rise out as the heroes of the case. Boyle starts dating a convicted felon and food lover, Genevieve. With Jake's help, they prove her innocence and get her released. Rosa and Marcus have broken up. She bounces back by dating Adrian Pimento. A few weeks after they start dating, they are engaged, but he has to go into hiding when they figure out that Jimmy the Butcher tried to get him killed with an FBI informant. Amy goes undercover in prison to resolve the issue of who is the FBI informant. Whilst the precinct teams up with Holt's ex-partner, FBI Bob Anderson. He is secretly an agent for Butcher. Once they are alone, he tries to assassinate Holt. Nonetheless, Terry saves the day. The FBI unravel Jimmy's squadron but are unable to find him, so he threatens their lives for this. Jake and Holt are forced to go into witness protection and hide out in Florida. They live next to each other, tired of their Floridian lives. They track down Jimmy with the help of the squad. However, when they get back from Florida, they are all put on the night shift. Charles and Geneve adopt a child named Nicola. Gina is hit by a bus and impregnated by Charles' cousin Milton. Jake and Amy move in together. Without much to do, Jake and Rosa try to get more assignments from Lieutenant Melanie Hawkins, except that she is a crooked cop that frames them with bank robbery. So they are sentenced to 15 years in prison. Adding on to it, their witness flips in court. Holt gets them out of prison by making a deal with mob boss Murphy. Rosa Rosa breaks up with Pimento and gets a new girlfriend. Jake helps her reveal to her parents that she is actually bi. He has also been stuck on death duty due to his mental health. The squad help him to propose to Amy and she says yes. Gina returns to the precinct after her maternity leave. Her and Terry help Holt on a campaign to try and get promoted to NYC commissioner. After breaking Murphy's deal, he threatens to go after Kevin, Holt's husband. Him and Jake are forced to stow away in a safe house, going crazy watching Nicolas Cage films. Jake almost gets the killed by placing Kevin in danger at the library. The nightmare ends. When Kevin runs over Murphy, Boyle buys a food truck business, but it burns down slowly after. Amy passes the sergeant exam, and that means she'll get her own squad. Jake and Amy consummate their relationship with their official marriage. Holt finds out that he isn't going to be NYC commissioner and lost to John Kelly, sending him into a rabbit hole of depression and eventually interrupts Jake and Amy's honeymoon, where he gains the courage to publicly shame Kelly for his policies 
properties and for this, Kelly crowds their floor with indefinite renovations to the bottom floor. A profound speech by Jake convinces Gina to leave the 99 and pursue her dreams as a business owner. Rose's mother fully accepts her as bisexual now. With Gina gone, Peralta makes it his mission to find Holt a new assistant. Lynn is one of their candidates, who was actually sent there to spy on them by Kelly. Holt forces Kelly to reopen the first floor, clearing the crowding. Jake meets up with Amy's brother and mother, David and Camilla. Nicolaj meets his biological father, Gintars. Seeing Boyle's sad stricken state, he finds incriminating evidence to deport him. Holt guilt trips Rosa into meeting her new girlfriend, Jocelyn. Jake and Amy decide to have a baby. Sergeant Terry Jeffords passes his lieutenant exam, but the 99 doesn't have the budget for his pay rise, so he is forced to transfer. Jake and Charles investigate a heart surgeon murderer with John Kelly's new app that has been spying on civilians. Unable to reveal this to the public because if they do, 18 convicted felons will go free. Jake constructs a suicide squad with Holt's enemies and CJ. Their plan is to kidnap CJ and when Kelly releases the Stingray, they will arrest him for constitutional violations. The mission is successful and Wunsch is the relieving commissioner that demotes Holt for the time being to patrolman as he served less than the required time, leaving enough budget for Terry to stay at the 99. As a patrolman, Holt is assigned to a new partner, Debbie Fogel, the cousin of Jared Fogel. Amy has a pregnancy scare and finds out that it was false, but they want to start trying for a baby. In Holt's absence, they receive Captain Kibb. After being invited to a party, they ruin it by trying to find incriminating evidence that she is conspiring with Madeline Wunsch against them, but she wasn't, and chooses to transfer after this incident. Jake and Charles help Adrian stop Stop forgetting his memories and he tells Charles that Jake is actually trying for a baby. He inspires Debbie to do anything she puts her mind to, so she sings for the entire precinct and steals cocaine and weapons from the evidence locker. The squad catches on fast, linking her to Nucci, a drug boss. Jake and Rosa break her out, posing as crooked cops working for Nucci. They persuade her to turn on Nucci and she gets a commuted sentence for it. Jake and Amy continue to try for a baby unsuccessfully. Hitchcock adds another divorce to his belt. Number 8. Madeline wanted dies and Holt holds an emotional memorial for her. Amy and Jake are finally pregnant. Holt regains his position as captain of the 99 now that Wunsch is gone. Rosa is broken up with. Boyle is made leader of his own task force after he solves a precinct prank bomb. Jake and Amy find out they're having a boy. Terry and Charles make a new bone broth business that stops once they all start exploding. Jake saves Kevin and Holt's dog Cheddar from a kidnapper. In return, Holt saves him from being kidnapped. New York has a blackout. Jake Jake and Charles arrest the perpetrator, picking up a grandma on the way for her safety. She then shoots the perpetrator. Jake is forced to take Lieutenant Peanut Butter back to the precinct, where he barely makes it back in time for his child's birth, named McLean after John, which Holt and Terry were distracting her with their new fashionable dance routine. With the protests in 2020 and the death of George Floyd, Rosa quits the force, creating her own PI business to tackle individualized cases. Boyle is consistently apologetic to Terry, often sending him money for reparations. Holt divulges to Amy that with his sole focus on work, his relationship with Kevin has strained and he has separated with him. The squad goes birdwatching at Holt's lake house, unbeknownst to him, they invited Kevin and hatch a plan to get them back together. It works, and they start couples counselling next week. Hitchcock has retired and talks to Scully through FaceTime. The precinct stages a walkout after a rat was found in an officer's food, saying that it was a staged attack. Holt proved that it was wrong by getting Rosa to prove the officer bought the rat moments before. Using the Comstat numbers to show that the percentages of complaints and bad arrests are down, meaning if the walkout doesn't end, they might have to release officers, forcing O'Sullivan to end the walkout. After Peralta interjects himself into a case and arrests an innocent man, he tails him, trying to figure out if O'Sullivan had set him up, but with the help of Rosa and Amy, they figure out that he is a part of the police union and trying to get him out of being suspended, but he admits to all wrongdoing and Holt is forced to give him a 5 month suspension. During his suspension, he spends time with Charles and Terry at the Boyle family countryside house, where DNA test results conclude that Charles isn't a Boyle, he is actually one side removed because his mother cheated on his father. But he opened the great grandmother Sour Do Jar and is crowned the one true Boyle, giving a eulogy at their grandfather's funeral. Hulk created a dating profile, effectively leading Kevin to running in the rain, like a poetic film, to get Raymond back to him. So they decide to get remarried, just making it back in time for them to renew their marriage. Their new reform 
program has led to the promotion to Deputy Commissioner of Police Reform and he wants to bring Santiago along with him to become Chief Police of Reform. To commiserate Holt and Amy's last days, they decide to have their last annual heist. Jake and Amy hatch an elaborate scheme to get the golden tube. Inside, it is a replica of the Medal of Valor, but it is actually a gift from Jake. He is calling the 9-9 to alleviate pressure from Amy's new job and to take care of Mac. Holt is getting a tie because he taught Perosa like a father. Rosa is getting a board game because game night will still occur beyond the 9-9. However, Charles finds a resignation letter in his locker and abruptly walks off for not telling him prior. He makes it up, comforting him. With all of them hatching plans to fool each other for the perfect goodbye, Bill traps them in a storage container for ending all the heists, where Jake reflects and reveals to the squad that he is leaving the NYPD. So they work together to figure out that Hitchcock had actually won. He bought it off Bill for $40 and never really quit the force. They have heartfelt goodbyes and agree to continue the heists each year. This is where the story ends. For another sad series, watch this.